it's on the head of the awards. First question. Good morning, Earl. How are you doing? Hi, Rick. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mick, it's a, it's a rather large first squad in your second time round. Uh, what's the logic about naming so many players? Is it just to keep them all motivated? I guess there's a bit of that. Tony, yes, there's a bit of that. And also, I think, I've not, I've not to name them before, have I? So, I guess if I don't name them, I think they're not interested, not even got a chance of being in there. And we'll get injuries at the weekend, certainly, so. I can't have to name them, because if I don't, then I can't go back and name them. They can, they can turn me down and say they can't have a player, so. That's my logic. I need it, any. And then, um, the recall of, of Glenn Whelan, I mean, he got a, a lot of love at the end, which I thought was going to be his, his last game for, for Ireland, uh, and got a good send-off, but obviously you've been impressed enough with him, and uh, you think he may have a, a part to play for you? Well, I rang him, and I asked him if he retired, and he said, no, he hadn't. So, whether he was retired, as opposed to he retired himself, I don't know. Uh, he's playing very well, yeah. Uh, he's playing with kind of Huron as well, so there's a bit of a partnership there. Uh, you probably all put this potential to be playing in the field now, but, uh, but at least there is some understanding of playing together, those two. Uh, I'm not, I wonder about our squad of midfield players, about somebody who could do a specific role as a sitter. Uh, he certainly can. Whether he ends up in being in the final squad remains to be seen, of course. But I've been impressed with him, yes. Well, I can hardly imagine that you call him back into the provisional squad from retirement, so to speak, and then not bring him. Well, I could. I could. I might want him for a specific game at any stage. Um, and I think just knowing that he's not being. he's not being forgotten about, that he's still being thought about as a player that can have a. Do a job in the national team. I think would he would be he'd be pleased with that. I would have thought. What about Darren Murphy? You were thinking about him. I imagine did you have a conversation with him about bringing him back? I did, uh, and he told me he retired. Doesn't particularly want you know. He's gone away from being away. I think he is he's of an age where he likes to have that time off when the international breaks come. I think it will benefit him in terms of his club career, but I did say if I need you, and I called you, and then the <coughs> finances said, well, we'll see, so it wasn't a no. Uh, who knows, there might be a game I might need him for, but I didn't put him in, because he's, he's, he's been at pains, I think, to tell people recently that he's retired. How much do you have to plan for, for the second game of the doubleheader, as much as the, the, the first, obviously, the usual mantra is take every game as it comes, but you've got the Gibraltar game away and then you've got to think of a Georgia side who's getting closer and closer to us, it seems, over the years. Well, in naming the squad that I've done, I've considered that. So, you know, and what if, if we went to Gibraltar and I wanted to change somebody and bring somebody else in, so I've named a sufficient amount of players. Uh, I think the... Uh, just a different surface, playing... Coming back, recovery after that is different than having played on, on grass, certainly. Not bemoaning the pitch at all, it's just, it is just different. Uh, and just travelling back, but I've, I've named sufficient players if I want to change the tone and do something different for the next game. You've got to have a look at the pitch, haven't you? I mean, what, what did you think of, of, of the ground, the venue? And I mean, it's, it's an astroturf pitch, I mean, it's... You know, if I said I was going to go and see it, I wanted to go and see it, see the surroundings and, and, and get a feel for it, which I've done. Uh, <clears throat> it's a very small stadium, there's a, there's a rock of Gibraltar behind and one goal and there's the airport behind the other. It's, a, it's an unusual, you know, it would be an unusual place for, for players to be playing. Certainly with the stadiums that, that the players play in now. But it's, uh, it's their stadium, it's their home, they've... They've got it ready and prepared to play in it. We've got to go and do a job there, got to go and win. Does it change the approach in a way though? Do you try and keep the ball on the ground more because of the surface? I'm going to go and play football on it. Sorry. And, uh, I'm not 
sure I quite understand that one a little bit. Do you, do you think the surface changes the way the way you approach the game? Well, I've asked I've asked them to be our I asked the surface to be exactly the same when we train on a Friday evening because depending on how much water they put on it, it can have a real effect on the on the pitch. Uh, years ago when, I, when when it was allowed and you used to go and play an AstroTurf pitch, they'd let you train it on a Friday and it'd be bone dry and then on a Saturday there'd be a uh, horse pipe on it for three hours prior to it, so the surface is different. And I've asked that it's exactly the same, but I've watched games from the Nations League. And actually, when they hit the ball in behind it, it doesn't run out, it sits up. Mm. So we'll be training on the Astro Turf at Town and uh, trying to get a feel for it. And finally, for me, uh, McGeady, back in your plans again. He's been very impressive for, for Sunderland. And obviously, you think he can do a job for you as well? Well, he's in the squad, so he's, he's got a chance. Uh, but equally, you know, Ronan Curtis, some of the younger ones have impressed me. Ronan Curtis, Calmo Dowder, uh, who've done very well at their clubs and both been scoring goals. Uh, Aidan's, yes, he's been playing. Uh, he's playing for one of the better teams in the league as well. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's a kind of... Robbie Brady's just coming back. James McLean's been playing, scored. I went to watch him at Ipswich. He kind of got a lot of players in those wide areas where there's other places, not as many. Pleasure. Mick, um, can I ask you about Patrick Bamford? Obviously, a lot of speculation about whether you might yep. be able to get him. Obviously, not in the squad at the moment. Have you given up on him? Not at all. No, I, uh, my last contact with him was on Saturday morning after he after he Saturday morning, Sunday morning when he played. When did they play? Friday night, was it? And one Friday night. Uh, I just congratulate him on his goals and his the, the one two at the edge of the box was a sublime finish. It was. And just asked him if he still wanted to continue with to join us. He said yes, and I'm hoping to meet him. So no, I haven't given up on it. No, not at all. So you're pretty positive then. Would June be the likely position so, when he might? Well, come? if if it, if it does, it's going to be June now because we're not going to get it for these games. But uh, I've I've made that clear to him, and I'm hoping to see him ASAP. Do you think you have to convince him, or the conversation you had on the phone, you, you sensed that was it, he, he's, he's coming? I asked him, I asked him the question, do you, is it still the same, do you still want to join us, do you still want to come? Yes, was the answer, and so then it's a matter of me, I'm just having a chat with him. And I, 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 you know, I stressed to him that if he wants to be involved in June, we'll have to get it done as quickly as possible. And Nathan Redmond, any updates on him? Nothing at all. In terms of the players you have brought in, um, James Collins obviously scoring a lot of goals for yes. Luton and uh, Padraig Hammond as well. What can you tell us about those two? Uh, well, exactly that, the scoring goals. And uh, James Collins certainly scored goals at... Actually, uh, both of them have scored goals at their respective levels, wherever they've been. Both have good score scoring records. Padraig Hammond, of course, has been brought to the attention of everybody by his goals in the FA Cup. Uh, I, don't, I tend not to judge people on... A couple of games in cup competitions because teams do have really good times and, and they can get a, a hero from them. But he's scored goals all season for his club. James Collins has scored wherever he's been. Uh, we used to watch him when he was at Aston Villa in the reserves and I was at Wolves. And uh, always been a, a competent player, he's been a goal scorer. And if you look at the squad, you probably see that we're not. Uh, you know, the the lads in there the goals had an excellent season. Uh, Sean Maguire's had an excellent season since he's got back from injury. But uh, if we can help them out, Murphy retiring, it's it's somebody of a different time to be quite honest. Mick, um, we spoke to John O'Shea, former captain there on Monday, and he said that Bamford would be, would be a welcome addition to the squad. But he said that after that, the chasing of players um, has to stop. You know, players who might qualify through the the so-called brand new rule. <laughs> I'll wait till he's sat in this chair, shall we? That's, I love that one. <laughs> Do you think it does have to stop or? It's, it's amazing how uh, people's opinions as a player and an ex-player suddenly changes when he's sat in the hot seat. So I won't answer it, we'll wait and see. Just the, on the, the players that... I mean, England have done it, haven't they? So well, as England have done it, they'll chase one of our better ones. And they took him. So uh, it's not only it's not only us. Doing. I think it's, it's, it's surely it's my job here to have the best team possible 
of players that qualify, and that's what I'll continue to do. Do you think maybe if somebody like that comes into the squad and some of the players who, you know, are you know Irish born and qualified, that there might be it might cause a bit of disruption in the dressing room? Would that be a concern at all? Not at all. No, because I've been in the dressing room when when it's happened. If you remember, uh, I've actually walked into the dressing room and you know took some of his players who was born in Ireland and played. And did he cause any consternation or any upset? I don't know. Not with me. I, uh, I played in 88, 19, had a pretty good time to be quite honest and a lot of other, other guys who were in that squad weren't born and bred in Ireland and I, I've never seen any trouble with it at all. Just on some of the players that you mentioned just before there who were playing below the second tier in English yeah. football, do you think they're players who are capable of playing at a higher level or is it just a case where Ireland have to accept now that you know we maybe have to recruit a lower standard of player? Uh, I think that's a little bit unfair, isn't it? In your court, it's a lower standard of player. I'm, I'm talking about players who are playing at their level and the scoring goals. And uh, I don't think that can be easily dismissed, to be quite honest with you. Um, and both of them, if we're talking about James Collins and Podrick Hammond, have, have had good seasons. And I think that should be recognised in the fact that I've called them up as opposed to uh, sort of insulting them, which I'm not going to do. Yeah, no, that's what I just want to know, if, if you think they're capable of playing at a higher level, is, you know, maybe this could help them. I think that uh, if you've got somebody in a rich vein of form, goal scorers, you may just require that at some stage, and putting somebody on who's not scored 20 goals a season, I'd soon have somebody, if I know a chance falls to him, he might just put it in the net, and that's... That's what I'm looking at. Um, and do you know what? Who knows? We've, we've seen. I bet you didn't have your money on Podrick and then scored into mm -hmm. it in the games he's played in the two teams he played against. I did. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> did you show me that betting? <laughs> uh, but just to finish then as well, because the, you know, obviously we're going to be hosting games here, do you think is there more pressure on you now to qualify in this tournament? <clears throat> I don't think there can be any more pressure put on is it than, than I put on myself to be quite honest in terms of doing it but there'd be a great expectancy now that we've got games here and yeah of course it does add a little bit to it because uh, it'll be a lot better tournament if we're in it. Mick, um, just uh, from the squad of today there's a really strong emphasis on goal scoring and um, goal scorers that whole argument and conversation about Robbie Keane never been re really replaced. Um, Can I just jump yeah, okay, in? Okay, so I've never actually said anything about Robbie Keane. No. It's never, it's never, never been mentioned from my lips. And no, that's that's. I don't, more, I don't know how many teams can replace. Yeah, no, that's more of a, a perception from previous. Um, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to say, you know, in terms of the international football, um, have you sort of noticed since you've been away from it that? It's got a lot tighter in games, and the importance of, of a natural score to be it can make really can make a difference in, the, in the, at that level. No, no, I, did, I didn't. I didn't think for a minute when I was in it 17 years ago that it was wide open and there needed to be scoring goals all the time. But I also understood and recognised that we won games or got through games because we had a wonderful goal scorer. You know, people ask me what's the best game, probably Robbie Keane scoring against against Germany in, uh, in Japan, <coughs> he'd, he'd got that happy knack, it's great, and everybody wants that, but everybody needs that needs a goal score at times, and I'm not at times, you always need them, you need to win games, simple as that, but I don't, I've, not, I've not noticed it getting any tighter, no. So just in terms of, since you took the job but up to now, um... Is it as you, I haven't been in any international game since I took yeah, the job, so I've not noticed anything. So it's more, in terms of uh, envisaged it, the, the players available, so is this um, as you expected? Of course, because when, I've, when, I, when I took the job and I get the list of players who are available to me, and the list of players who are potentially available to me, that there'd be no surprises since December the 1st, no, I'll tell you. And just to finish, um, have you decided on the, the captain for you, so what are you going to wait until the later for No, I haven't. I'll wait till they all come in and um, see the weekend's games, but I'll wait till they all come in to decide that.
Thanks. Thanks. Mick, uh, since uh, you were with the Ireland team in 2002, you've just been in club management. Um, how is it, how have you adapted to the change since coming back to national management in terms of the time that you have with players on the field? I, I, I haven't, have I? I've, I've not. I can't. I can't really answer that. I've, I've had no time with anybody at all, so I haven't had to adapt. From Sunday, I will. I don't think that's going to cause me any problems. To be quite honest with you, in terms of being around players, I've been doing that all my life as a player, as a manager, as a coach, and I don't envisage any problems. But uh, I've not had to adapt yet. That's we'll see. Come Sunday. In the time that you've been watching the Ireland squad, that you haven't been manager. Have you been watching it and assessing it, thinking in what way that you would play yourself um, if you were to take over the, the management job yourself? No. I think if, if you look back on what I've been doing since I did it, it was Sunderland, Wolves, Ipswich. I've had my hands full, so I don't I don't look at other teams and think about how I'm going to do it. I've generally been thinking I'm going to do my own team, so no, I'm. And just finally for me, um, Georgia, obviously we had a 100% record against Georgia up until last uh, September uh, where we drew and ultimately it cost us a place in automatic qualification. Um, in the qualifiers for the last Euros, uh, they took points away from Scotland which ultimately let us overtake them and uh, reach our playoff spot. How important is it to you see in not overlooking Georgia home and away uh, for this qualifier? I wouldn't overlook anybody. I think it's important to treat them all the same and to prepare them just like you would. Uh, if we prepare for Denmark and Switzerland, we'll prepare exactly the same for Georgia and for Gibraltar. I wouldn't dismiss anybody. Um, and I, I saw, I've seen bits of them, I've seen since, I've seen them on the uh, analysis. And Georgia are a really good football team, keep the ball really well. Um, no, I'd be, uh, I'd be very cautious of them. Hi Nick, how's it going? Hello, how are you doing? How are you getting on? <laughs> Just on Patrick Bamford, you obviously stressed to him that you'd like to get it sorted soon. Have you actually set him a deadline? No, no, I've just I've tried to get a date to meet him. I mean, I've, been, I've, I've gone through this before where he's been, he's been injured. I couldn't see him, he was going to travel down to QPR. That game was cancelled and, and replayed. Uh, and I've been, I've been trying to get to see him. I've been trying to get to see him. Hopefully, we can before we travel to Gibraltar. Mm. But that's not me setting him a deadline saying it's got to be done before then. That's me just trying to get it. Yeah. Is there a danger that this could drag on just like the Declan Rice <coughs> situation? I don't know. If he doesn't see him, then yeah, it's probably good. You're not, you're not overly worried or overly stressed about the situation? No, because I can't play. He's not my player. You know, if, he, if, he, uh, if we meet up and he wants to play, and he, 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 I'd be delighted if he does, because quite clearly he's a, he's, a, he's a talented player, and if he really wants to come and play, then uh, we'll get it done. But I'm not, no, I, I don't worry about things like that, because why would I? Mm. Just work on uh, James McCarthy, have you been following his uh, recovery? Yes, I have. Um, and I've been speaking to him, I, I spoke to him couple of times, tried to get him, well hopefully he would go out on loan at Christmas in the January window, uh, you know, they didn't, they wouldn't let him go, he couldn't go for whatever reason, and he's not, he's not started again for a long time, so I think he's one of our best midfield players, but, you know, best midfield players who don't play, they're not the best midfield players, they're not people who are playing games, so we're battling at him. Yeah, and when he is back, he could be a very important player for you, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to have him back, and I've, I've stressed that to him. Uh, even getting games, in, I the last time I was in, I was talking about him playing in the 23s and getting some football time, because if he, if he played two or three games in there, at least he would have had those 90 minutes. And uh, I can't stress how important that is. Very rare in my time somebody's been out of that. No, never in my back into the first team. They would have had to play in the reserves or the 23s. Uh, or the 21s or whatever it was called at the time. You need, you need football before you go back into the first team. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Mick, do you know how many players will be, like, what are the numbers of that final squad? 
23. 23. Um, Thank you, Okay. Okay. Yeah. And my second quick fire question is: uh, Liam Kelly at Reading was a player who was in, in previous squads and then decided to pull out about a year ago. Have you met with him? Is he going to commit to Ireland? I haven't met with him. No, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to commit to Ireland. Yeah. He was pretty non-committal, I believe, the last time. The last I've heard, uh, I think it might have been through John O'Shea's conversation. Actually, he wants to concentrate on his club career and get back in the team and get playing. But when I've seen him. And I saw him uh, last season. It was the last season beginning of this? I can't remember now. Uh, I think he's played well. Yeah. But, so are you kind of trying to meet him, like with Bamford, or is it just... I'm always trying. Sure. Are you trying to meet him? But as regard, like you I are don't want Bamford? Him. No, I haven't. Uh, no, no, I haven't. No. Okay. Okay. Last questions? Richard? Hi hey Mick, uh, no. just on Callum Robinson, is he back to fitness or is there a reason why he's not in the squad? Because apparently the perception was that he's back, is it just too soon? Apparently he trained last week, but I'm just going back to the gentleman's question there, that somebody has been out for that long. And, uh, you know, if he played on Saturday, if he turns up and he plays on Saturday and I, and I rang Alex Neal up and said, is it alright, can I put him in the squad, he'd let me put him in if I needed him, so... I'm, I'm, I've no concerns about that. He hasn't played. He's been out for a long time. And Alan Brown, it's been a while since we had a goal scoring midfielder. Is he someone you can build a team around? Well, he's somebody who can bring goals to a game, that's for sure. He scored 12 this season. And uh, I watched him at QPR, played well there. I watched him at Millwall, they, they were excellent at Millwall. Him and Sean McGuire, Sean McGuire's performance <coughs> was top class. But going back to it, you know. Goal scorers and certainly goal scorers from midfield, players getting in the box and that happy now. That's that's a lovely asset to have in a team that. Kieran Sadler is one of those players he's playing with Doncaster, he hasn't done too badly, probably not for him as well as he'd like, but is he somebody that was on your radar? No. Not until he went until he went to Doncaster and then of course I've had, had a couple of reports about him and when he's come on he's done okay. But uh, I don't think he's in front of the players I've put in. So it's up to him to play there, do well, and then put himself on my radar. And lastly, the Irish Messi, Daryl O'Connor. Have you seen anything about him? Have you seen those comments? League of Ireland, Cork City. Uh, have you read anything I've said about Daryl O'Connor recently? Yeah, you said that you were impressed by him. Have you seen anything else? Well, I know, you know, that's quite clearly you did. So. I was impressed in the one game I saw, he was the best player on the pitch, I thought. And he was the one for me that, that stood out, I took people on. And he got a couple of good crosses in, then he went to play down the inside. I thought he was, he was a good performance, yeah. I didn't realise he was the Irish Messi, though. Kind of fact, Owen. Well, that's, if Pat says he is, I'm not going to argue with him. Uh, Mick, is Will Keane fully eligible now? Um, said he would have been... Tell on the FAO's website that he would have been in the squad if not been injured, is that all Tom does? It's irrelevant, it? isn't it, because he's injured? Yeah, but would he have been? I don't know, I'm not quite sure about that, I didn't think he was. But, uh, well, he's not eligible. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's not eligible. Yeah, he's not, yeah, okay. All right. Is he telling you he's on the website? Yeah, he's on the website, yeah. Oh, that's, uh... <laughs> oh well, okay. He's not eligible, yeah. Okay, we're going to be in the phone now, sir. Guys, I just want to tell you. All right, good. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much.